It's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, and I'd like to start by saying that uh, redesigning our food and food systems and reimagining our relationship to natural systems through this is the space race of the 21st century. I, um, I know there's much enthusiasm for reimagining food, but um, there's some popular misconceptions we have to actually get past. I run something called the Environmental Health Clinic, which um, is a clinic that treats uh, health as an environmental issue and the environment as a health issue. Um, actually, Hippocrates came up with this idea, the guy who wrote the Hippocratic Oath. Um, but I'm really interested in that um, sort of that primary interface to natural systems through our, what we ingest and what we inhale, through that juicy interface of epithelial skin. Um, so I've um, developed a couple of spin-out organisations from my um, environmental health clinic, uh, the Pharmacy and the Cross-Species Adventure Club that I'll tell you about today. Um, uh, these are in order to explore food and food systems that not only reduce our food miles and reduce our petrochemical fertilisers and reduce our pesticides and reduce our runoff, but food and food systems that actually improve environmental health and increase biodiversity. And I want to say that again because I think this is raising the bar on what the food movement thinks it's doing. It's, uh, it's necessary but not sufficient to reduce our negative damage. We need to design, design food and food systems that actually improve environmental health and increase biodiversity. So the pharmacy is a distributed urban agriculture system to improve air quality, um, to reduce runoff, to in, um, increase biodiversity, and of course to produce delicious edibles, specifically high nutrition value, high commercial value, highly perishable, non-distributable goods. Because um, one of the big critiques, oh, it's based on the ag bag, which, is a, um, uh, which exploits the high tensile strength and the micropores of Tyvek, um, a material you're probably familiar with from your FedEx envelopes or from the bands they put on you when you go into a, you know, the incredible tensile strength, right? But has these, it's a high density polyethylene that's heat welded, so there's no binders in there to leach into the soil. Um, and it oxygenates the entire root zone. So we have a very inexpensive way to, in fact, uh, drape uh, over any railing or double hung window or parapet uh, using existing urban structure to turn um, thin air into arable territory. Uh, so one of the big critiques of urban agriculture is um, why? Um, why spend basically 100 times more. Um, why not just invest in those struggling rural communities, those family farms that, why, uh, why spend this um, excess amount on urban agriculture? And of course, there's an, a number of reasons, but the first thing is to, um, is to kind of have a non-compete agreement with rural agriculture. So that's what the pharmacy does. What sort of food can you grow in an urban context that you can't grow in a rural context? Um, anybody got ideas? Um, marijuana. marijuana? That's certainly high commercial value, isn't it? Um, uh, nutrition value. David, is that? I don't know. It's inhalable, right? So um, <laughs> the um, uh, actually, actually, can we go back one. Sorry, yeah. Um, high nutrition value, high commercial value, highly perishable, non-distributable goods flowers. Flowers are the most nutrient-dense food we know of and uh, help us kind of with that, in that cultural shift that we're in the midst of, of food not being about calories and burning energy but uh, about being powerful antioxidants. That high colour in flowers signals those lycopenes, those phytochemicals, those um, antioxidants that are required by the urban body assaulted by so many urban contaminants. Um, of course, flowers support pollinators, and we've all probably heard of the pollinator crisis. Um, but uh, the, a big issue is that flowers, a few uh, sprigs on a salad, don't a market make. Um, here's a um, couple of uh, recent vertical plot we did. This is actually a, um, you might know this parking lot, it's in Shoreditch here. I have, this is a Photoshop actually. Um, uh, I have permission to do this 
and we're currently um, fundraising to do any company that's interested in each each layer is think of it as a banner ad that um, improves air quality and uh, increases uh, biodiversity uh, supports pollinators um, uh, that uh, so we're currently doing these larger deployments because the single technology we have to improve air quality, the single demonstrated technology that we have to improve our urban air quality, and uh, you, know, you probably know that your lifespan is more predicted by you, the proximity of your home to a major arterial road than by your genes. Um, you probably know that pediatricians spend the largest majority of their time is um, treating asthma and the asthma epidemic. Um, and, um, Anyway, air quality is a, an issue, and we have one technology, fortunately it's very inexpensive, that we know improves air quality, leaf area index. So leaf area uh, is uh, the technology that we have. This deployment will see how much um, we can, particulate matter, we can move carbon, we can, uh, carbon dioxide, we can sequester, and what kind of difference we can make. But back to this issue of uh, flowers, what do you do with edible flowers? Um, uh, the black pansies, actually, if we go back a couple of slides, oh, actually, we'll go forward. Um, uh, let me skip over. This is what I'll be serving you later, actually, at the test lab um, later this afternoon. Um, one of the food products that we've developed called Flower Floss. Um, in the US, floss actually uh, has, you know, for flossing. Put that aside, this is a cotton floss. Or free Libra open source not software, but systems in this case. Flower floss is uh, floss, but that is not uh, sugar, that's isomalt. And isomalt, for those of you who have a sluggish gut or irregular bowel movements, you'd be familiar with isomalt because it's a major ingredient in Metamucil. So it, um, it's digested in your lower gut. It fosters biodiversity in your lower gut. You're farming your lower gut, if you will. Um, what we do is um, dust it with bee pollen, stick in some edible flowers, and uh, put in a LED to create a taste of a biodiverse future of carnivalesque uh, promise uh, food that um, uh, um, is really quite delicious. You'll get to try it. Um, sorry. Can we go back two slides? Another um, thing we've been doing, I've been doing these as manufacturing, uh, manufactories, which are kind of a mashup of a party and a manufacturing assembly line. So um, the open source cola, um, as you move along, you put in your, um, your open source cola. The open source cola was a recipe with a new license that, um, uh, you know, as you put in your um, uh, syrup, it, you can see that it has orange, lemon, lime, nutmeg, cassia, coriander, lavender, neroli oil. Um, you, uh, this was a recipe that was leaked from Coca-Cola about uh, 15 years ago, and Kate Rich and Kale Brandon actually um, uh, developed it. We um, taken out the carcinogens and added more amiable substances. So you can add your sugars. Add um, for Love Cola, you'll add uh, New England aster um, tincture. The Iroquois Indians used new, uh, asters as a, a love potion. It's also a powerful antiviral. Or um, uh, St. John's wort flowers, which uh, uh, for Happy Cola. A lot of people have been doing a double dose of that. It gives you a great buzz. Um, you move along the manufacturing line, um, and of course, if you assemble your cola, you buy it for five dollars. If you don't assemble it, you buy it for ten dollars. So this idea of manufacturing as a convivial uh, opportunity to discuss and this radical transparency of what's in your food, because if you've made it, um, you know what's in it. However, quality control has been an issue, actually. Um, I don't know why. I mean, because, you know, the assembly line is actually really reducing the uh, production to very simple uh, tasks. So I've actually recently formed a new um, company using musical, high school musical theatre companies. Um, call, uh, and this is to uh, staff the manufacturers with... Um, this new company, uh, Child Labor. Um, uh, and these are 15-year-olds that are rehearsing uh, how to assemble food products. But this is the kind of child labor, the kind of manufacturing context in which we would want our children to eat, live. These, and these children will lecture you patiently or impatiently on 
how um, flower floss will improve the biodiversity in your lower gut and increase biodiversity in your urban environment as you use flowers. So, um, so these are some of the food explorations. I want to introduce you to some other current projects. Um, the Mussel Choir. Uh, these, the blue mussels, are internationally distributed. These are the heavy lifters of water quality improvement, right? These are the future of food, and probably with the midden theory of human evolution uh, contributed a great deal to um, the, our history of food. Um, these, uh, the mussel choir actually takes these blue mussels and uh, instruments them, adds little... Um, Hall effect sensors, so we know when they open and close. Um, we can measure that. That tells us a lot when they're opening and closing about water quality. So um, the mussel choir uh, here in the East River. You might have heard that there was a, a little superstorm that came through uh, New York City called Superstorm Sandy. Um, this is now actually the only 15 feet of all the Manhattan shoreline that is a reconstructed uh, shoreline. Every other part of it is still a hard edge. Uh, so this is where the mussel choir is housed, where it will be improving air quality, uh, sorry, water quality, singing, because um, we translate the opening and closing. When they're open-mouthed and singing, water quality is good. And when they're um, closed and humming, it's less good. Of course, the, what do mussels sing? Um, if you ask Siri to sing you something, it, she uh, would sing you... Um, bicycle built for two. Um, it's, a, it's the icon of AI, um, but we're establishing not artificial intelligence, but natural intelligence using these distributed sensors, these uh, responsive organisms. Do we have some music? This is the um, bicycle built for too many. Um, by anyway, um, this all came out of actually um, another. Uh, installation called the Amphibious Architecture Array, which was a series of buoys that light up when, the, uh, when sw uh, fish swim underneath them. Sort of a low resolution display of fish presence, which um, we installed about three years ago in the East River and the Bronx River. And uh, you can see here, um, you could not only see that fish were there, you could also text the fish, and the fish would text you back. Um, of course, the first question people ask is, are there fish in the East River? And, uh, and let's see in here. Um, there are fish in the East River. <laughs> there's one coming across the front. Uh, we don't need the sound on this. And you can see there's some, the fish. So the lower light tells you um, the fish are on. The upper light moves from a uh, a warm red color when dissolved oxygen is low to a cool blue and green color when dissolved oxygen is high. Uh, so um, this uh, system, I'm now reinstalling a larger version of this in um, a very similar site. But the next interaction, once you text the fish, once you know they're there, is of course um, to reach in to your pocket and uh, you know, wherever there's urban animals, there's a sign, do not feed the animals, right? Because of that, that ubiquitous desire to do so. Um, so instead of feeding the fish stale bagels or, um, you know, cigarette butts or whatever you have to hand, we developed the lures, which are a, um, a nutritionally appropriate food. Um, the hook is there is no hook. Um, and uh, uh, they also have a chelating agent in them. So as the fish ingest them, it binds to the, the uh, bioaccumulated heavy metals, the PCBs, complexes, and passes it out in a less reactive form, where it settles into the silt and is effectively removed from bioavailability. Um, it does the same with people as well. It's a medical-grade chelating agent that you would get. Um, so this actually launched... Uh, the, the very idea of targeted drug delivery on an ecosystem scale, if you will, um, where uh, we're treating the fish as health, and of course the major source, source of mercury in your bodies is, is from fish and from your friendly neighborhood um, dentists. So, um, so I'll just uh, finish off with the Cross Species uh, Adventure Club, which has been a, a molecular gastronomy supper club where we've explored many of these food systems, many other substances that um, 
that can improve environmental health and increase biodiversity. I'll maybe wet kisses is a good one to finish off with. Um, the marshmallow for kissing a frog, formerly known as Prince. Uh, what this is is a marshmallow, of course, to rediscover the marsh in marshmallow. Wetlands are uh, critical ecosystems. But it also has um, a... Um, it has biolocin in it um, and uh, a ubiquitous soil bacteria called Jalovidium. Jalovidium, when it's found on the bacteria, on the microbial community of salamanders and frogs, of amphibians, they are protected from the deadly chytrid fungus, which is the big culprit in the biggest species extinction crisis since the dinosaurs. So as you bite into the marshmallow, your, um, your lips are inoculated with Jalovidum to equip you to kiss a frog and protect it from the deadly chytrid fungus. So this and many other delicious ways to explore new possibilities, new forms of relationships. Uh, this is a cross-species dining table that I'll finish off. New ways to um, really redesign our relationship to natural systems, to understand that we can, we could, and we must design food and food systems that actually improve environmental health and increase biodiversity. Thank you. Thanks, Natalie. So to remind us, at about just after half past six this evening, we'll be able to try your candy floss in the test lab. Area. In the test lab. Mm -hmm. What should we expect? Oh, uh, we... Uh, I'm not going to say too much. Um, there's some fresh... Um, it's very hard to find edible flowers at this time of the year, um, close to London, but we found some. There's some wonderful flower farms around this area. It's been marvellous to explore that. And... Um, no, come try. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. Natalie. <laughs>